Welcome to our first Ask a Mom webinar. I have today Maureen Bryce Bordelon here on the video with me. Uh, she's an advocate, author, and mama to three wonderful children, and the youngest being diagnosed with severe autism at the age of 16 months. Maureen started right away knocking down barriers and creating a better life for her children and uh, the fellow parents in her autism community. She's helped develop parent support groups, served as the volunteer coordinator for the 2015 Autism Education Summit, and organized medical seminars and autism fundraisers. But she didn't stop there. <laughs> Maureen published her first book in 2014 called My Autism Hat Rack, The Life Flip. And it's about navigating her way through the world of autism and meant to inspire and guide parents along their journey. And her most recent online publication is Essential Oils and Sensitive Systems, where she shares techniques on how to use essential oils with our loved ones with sensitive systems and extra needs. And that's what she'll be talking about today. Um, Maureen has created and hosts her parenting inspirational workshops, the Moms PMS Workshop, and PMS stands for Positive Mindset, not what you might be thinking. Uh, she's a blogger for the Dallas Morning News Special Needs Division, and she's testified in front of the Texas Education Senate Committee multiple times in favor of children's special educational rights, which uh, has resulted in a new autism education bill. So today, at the age of 15, her son Jonathan is succeeding in living a healthier life, breaking away from the fog of autism, and Maureen continues to create a pathway of hope. Um, her two websites currently are hopedreambelieve.com, and I'll post that in the chat section, and uh, essentialoilsforsensitivesystems.com. So I'll put those in the chat in a moment. I first want to say welcome, Maureen. <laughs> Thank you, Luminara. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I, I want to say also that Maureen and I met at the Autism Education Summit put on by Generation Rescue last fall, and I offered to be a volunteer, and she was a volunteer coordinator, and just, I loved working with Maureen, and it was so fun, and just Aww. all the great stuff she did. Yeah, you did a That's lot That's right. I can say that about you. Luminara <laughs> traveled all the way from Oregon to Texas to be there to donate her time and her energy on, all on her own dime. And you opened your heart to a whole new community. And I just want to thank you for everything you're doing, getting awareness and information out there for everyone. Oh, thank you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, let's start by just saying a little bit, you know, you could give a little synopsis, a uh, short synopsis about Jonathan and, you know, kind of your story. I mean, I know it's a, there's a lot to say, but if you want to just, you know, give a couple highlights and uh, about Jonathan and then how you got into the essential oils with him, that would be wonderful. Sure. Yeah. Um, I've got three beautiful kids, as you mentioned in the bio and thank you for all of that that went on and on and on, I'm sure. But <laughs> anyway, Jonathan was um, diagnosed uh, with autism, severe autism, when he was 16 months, but he actually was vaccine injured at three months with a DTAP shot and had a terrible reaction, high fever. Oh, speaking of, uh, we have a little guest real quick. So, can I say hi to Miss Luminara? Can you squat down? Hi, Miss Luminara. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> do you like your essential oils that you use? Yeah. You do? What's your favorite one? Peppermint. Peppermint. You heard it from the real pro here. <laughs> Go have a great day. Love you. So with autism, you have a lot of spontaneity. <laughs> that was great. Doors that aren't closed, you know, or, or are closed or opened. and Yeah, so... But uh, that's Jonathan, so that's our youngest, and he's you know 15, as you mentioned before. And we had a really bad reaction to the DTAP shot, and um, after that, and with antibiotics, he got whooping cough, and he just never really recovered from um, a compromised immune system. So I always was looking for natural remedies through the years because a lot of the over-the-counter pharmaceutical things just either overreacted in his system or underreacted and didn't fix the situations we needed um, or the issues that needed to be, you know, 
cured, basically. So what was great is um, he was about three is what we were figuring out. It was between three and four. And I was at a naturopath's office and um, she had um, been testing us for allergies. And anyway, he was running around the office. He was normally what people at that age before, you know, any sort of autism label was thrown on anything. It was hyperactivity and things like that. But um, so he's running around, not sitting down for this test. And she said, here, let me have a bottle. And so she grabbed like this bottle and then she, she had him smell it. And within about 15, 20 seconds, he walked over to my husband's lap, sat down and did the test for 45 minutes. Wow. And this was like, wow. I mean, like we couldn't go to restaurants with this child, right? So <laughs> to sit, have him sit for 45 minutes was humongous. So I said to my naturopath, I said, what is that? And I want a vat, a vat bottle. <laughs> And it was, um, the oil she used was called Peace and Calming, and it was of a certain um, therapeutic grade essential oil. And I had dabbled in oils before, just the kind you get at the health food store. And I had had great, um, you know, results with certain things. But when I looked at the therapeutic grade oil, it just helped me still kind of eliminate other toxins that I didn't have to worry about, you know, because there's so many hidden ingredients and things and everything. And, and believe me, when things have five syllables or more, I don't even read them. I just don't, I don't get them in my body. I don't like them. I don't even try and understand what they are. So I like simplicity and natural. So that was, that was kind of like the real like aha moment of, okay, these things are really working. They absorb in his system. We could apply them, you know, being three, and of course my kids were older, my other kids were older. I mean, you wanted something safe that you could apply easily. And on the essential oils, you can do it topically, aromatically, like in the diffuser here. And, um, and then internally, certain ones, you have to read your labels to find which ones. But I just thought it was like a home run to be able to have a natural remedy to help him with a lot of his challenges. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I could just imagine you in the office like, give me that. <laughs> I did. I almost wrestled her down to the ground. But, you know, <laughs> we're really oh. good friends and she loves me anyway. So, <laughs> like, oh, thank you. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, so you're going to tell us a little bit about, well, I, I actually want to hear, you're going to tell us about essential oils and maybe give us, I don't know, some insights. And I am curious, though, um, if you want to share a little bit about how you've shared this with other parents or what groups you've been involved in. I think you were involved in TACA. And just to, you know, share a little bit about other resources that parents might not be ex have been exposed to. Yeah, well, um, sure. And back in the day, like Jonathan was born in the year 2000. So it actually seems like a lifetime ago with the progress that a lot of the autism organizations have made in these years. Back then, there was no resources. The doctor said, good luck to me, shook my hand, and then sent me to get more vaccines, uh -huh. um, which I did because I didn't know. I just didn't know. And I think that's the most powerful thing a parent can have is to empower themselves, of course, with knowledge. And even if you don't agree with a lot of the things parents are saying out there, you know, whether it's to use a certain diet, don't get vaccines, do get vaccinated, just read and educate yourself, you know. Um, so back to the information source, I was online, and back then it was only AOL as a search engine, and I technically search engine wasn't even a word or a phrase, so. <laughs> I typed in autism and it kept sending me to Austin and then it kept sending me to artistic. So, um, I, there was just nothing, 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 nothing. And I went to, I found a seminar in Seattle, actually close to you mm -hmm. and, um, went to it and it was the autism association of America and they had information. So it was, to me, there is another world out there trying to get information to parents, trying to get doctors to recognize that things aren't going well for these, uh, just basically an entire generation. 
Now, I know there are young adults with autism. Jonathan's pretty soon going to be one of those. But um, back then, it still was one in 10,000, you know. Um, and then it was starting to increase and increase. Now it's one in, the CDC hasn't come out with this year's numbers, but last year's numbers were one in 56 and then one in, like, one in 48 boys. So it's tragic. And, you know, it is tragic. We are living a tragedy because you lose your child. You know, the, the hopes and dreams you have always wanted and you, um, you planned for are changed. And um, it's, it is. It's really hard to get through that grief period. But um, because there was nothing in our area, I really um, wanted to, to find parents. And I went to one group and it was very, it, where it was comforting knowing there are other parents there with kids like Jonathan. It was just too much of a, uh, I, I can't say the word, how GP, I just need to make sure that this is like, <laughs> anyway, it was not a very happy situation. It brought you down. Lady. Yeah. yeah. And um, I just left feeling more drained and, and depressed than when I went. And so my mission was to find other parents who had a po positive but a challenging and ready to do something and, and be active, not just complain and, and wallow in despair. And so that's what I did. I reached out. I found a mom who had a son at a school nearby. And then we started grabbing some parents, and there were seven of us, and we started our very first autism parent support group in our area. And from that, different parents went off to create and get associated with other uh, national organizations. And so there's the NAA, um, National Autism Association. There's TACA, Talking About Curing Autism. There's, of course, Generation Rescue, one of my favorites, because they bring that Autism Education Summit to our area. And they bring medical doctors to help educate parents. And you can, you can go in and get overwhelmed, but what a great thing from going from AOL being thrown to, you know, like Austin and artistic um, to being overwhelmed by over 100 doctors with ideas and solutions that might be able to help your child and your family. So it's come a long way, and I'm super excited about that. Oh, thank you. You're part of the autism revolution for sure. You know, oh. the evolution, revolution, whatever. Um, <laughs> I came up with one more question as I was listening to you and um, you know, everyone can think about their own answer to this. Yeah. And that question is what, what's the greatest gift that you've received from this autism journey so far? Wow. Well, first I do have to be very honest in my answer. Yeah. And I have to claim that I can't even see the word gift and autism in the same, you know, little sentence, but Jonathan is the gift, you know, his life, his beautiful soul, his spirit. It's just the gift to me. The positive and um, experience and, and the journey I want to take from the autism, of course, um, those can be considered gifts, which is, is how I can answer that, if that's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, first off to, I mean, there's so many, there's not even like a one, but patience. That, uh, wow. I never realized how impatient and uh, I was, and patience has definitely been uh, something Jonathan has taught me. And then um, to, to look outside the box even more than I always did in my lifetime, I mean, I would not be fearful about questioning things anymore. You know, I usually like to, you know, I'll raise my hand and ask a question in a seminar, but take the authoritative figure, who, you know, and pretty much believe what they say. And now I, if I don't, if I have that little voice in me saying, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't resonate with me. I'll start asking questions. So to be not defiant, but definitely um, more independent in the frame of thinking and out of the box thinking, that has been something I've, I've been able to. And then empathy. Oh my gosh. I mean, these children teach you empathy off the bat. And then they, 
they have their siblings, you know, that have been growing up in this entire environment. And these, I call them warrior siblings. And um, they're amazing. They're going to be changing the world because where the parents are knocking down barriers, these children are coming and they're actually creating communities and environments for their loved ones to um, to live in as much as the parents are. But it's a, it's a different perspective. You know, it's really amazing. Wow, thank you. And I hope everyone, you know, can go and think about that question too for themselves, or maybe they have it off the top of their head. But. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure they've thought of it. <laughs> it's, well, you know, yeah. it's, it's like that you have to, you, you can get sad, like I mentioned before about the grief, but you can't stay there long. I mean, it's just, you have to think of the positive things and the glass, glass is half full scenario yeah. because you need that energy to continue on and make a better life for the situations that that you have yeah I mm -hmm. love that you say that because you know like there is the glass half empty or the glass half full there's perspective and you know I, I like to believe that we create our own reality with that perspective you know so you can be down in the dumps all the time or you could be like pushing forward for solutions thinking outside the box and having that energy so I love that um, so tell us something about essential oils, uh, maybe your favorite mixes or a couple of uses that like almost everyone will find really um, useful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, to preface any of that, I do want to say that we've tried a lot of different things. You know, like we do a lot of therapies. Obviously, we've had 15 years to do them, you know. Um, so what I learned in those other therapies, whether it was diet, HBOT, uh, stem cells, ABA, behavior therapies, that type of thing, I learned I actually need to go um, biomedical with Jonathan first because once I got things balanced and healthy in that system for him, in his body systems, then anything else really worked better. And so the oils actually, that's when they started to just, you know, Amplify, and in 2010, Jonathan had a very scary situation happened, and he was choking and almost died. His esophagus shut, uh, swelled. I'm sorry, it shut. It swelled shut. Is that right? Was it all happening? You know, he. But it was his esophagus, so he could breathe a little, but he just was choking. You know, on his um, stomach acid and the mucus and everything. So. I started to look at things to help him and a lot of the things, steroids and everything like that, um, he couldn't tolerate. So the essential oils were my next thing. And that's when I started using them internally. And honestly, that's when I was like, all right, we use them 10,000 times a day, <laughs> everywhere for anything. Um, so some of my favorite things to balance out the um, immune system and help keep things supported is definitely a digestive uh, type of track for Jonathan. We do enzymes and we do probiotics and everything, which I hope everybody does research that because they're just needed. Um, but like you heard him, peppermint is his favorite oil. And we use peppermint. Um, there are different kinds. There's one that you can use topically or aromatically. Then there's another kind that you can use internally. And we use both that way. So um, he actually gets a capsule every day to take internally and it helps with his digestion and supports that. And then um, we rub it on um, at, you know, to on his belly button area and everything, bottom of his feet. We put it in the diffuser so he can be inhaling it. And um, that's my actual number one mm -hmm. peppermint. <laughs> Great. And do you like, have you done the research and this, is there science behind what actually that's doing in the body? Is it antimicrobial or do you know anything about that? It is. It's, um, to, I'd like to get really geeky about it. And, um, that, that's why I wrote my book. I wrote a book about, um, essential oils for sensitive systems and the sensitive systems are anyone who has a sensitivity to, um, their environment, you know, like uh, if, if they happen to have um, issues during seasonal changes and um, digestive issues and anything, any body system issue, you know, where it's immune system, lymphatic, anything like that. 
um, the sensitive system point of view to me helps when you are sitting there and Jonathan could take one drop that is magnified to a hundred to a normal person's like mine. Like, you know, I would need 10 drops for me, but he would only need one. So that again, kind of goes into the category of sensitive system. Um, yes, the molecules of the oils are, um, the, of course it's plant driven. So it's natural. Right. And the therapeutic grade level is, um, of all sorts of oil companies are out there. There are only just a handful that I am aware of that have oils at a therapeutic grade level. Um, the oils I use um, are oils that they farm their own oils. They, it's from a seed to seal. Actually, you can go seed to seal.com is the website they have where they show you how they grow their oils and distill them, cultivate them, bottle them, and get them to people. And um, very transparent. Seed to seal.com, I'll, I'll type that in. Yeah, seed to seal.com. S E A L. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's that, on your website, Essential Oils for Sensitive Systems. So if people want to click on them. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I also typed in your uh, website for essential oils if people oh, want to you. click on that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because that helps break it down too. Jonathan's pictures all over that. On. Like he couldn't go to the dentist and. And when we use oils and everything, he can now go to the dentist. And it just, you know, there's lots of awesome things that it can help with. But back to the geeky part of it all is each, um, like our bodies, we all have frequencies. And this was really cool for me to click in my head. So each oil has a frequency. Every living thing has a frequency. And so um, in my book, I, I broke it down to where I explain that, um, let me see if it's over here. Oh, do you want to share uh, your screen? Well, I don't think I have his name, okay. and it's Bruce, um, and I'm forgetting Bruce. Uh, he, anyway, he was like a um, scientist who created a machine to be able to measure the frequencies. And so each essential oil has frequencies that help when you apply them to the human body on a cellular level, it helps to raise or decrease the human body's frequency. So the, again, topical, aromatic, and um, ingesting, it's just the application is wonderful and it's very fast absorbent. See, you know, it's within, you know, two minutes to 10 minutes. So yeah, it's, there's a big old geeky section. I can share, let me share this real quick. We tried this earlier, Luminar, so cross your fingers that it works. Yeah. Okay. I have to get all my glasses too. Got it. Okay. So, real quick, right here, can you see this? Yes. Okay. So here are like the the frequencies that are in the oils that I use, the brand I use, and um, it just kind of in the book I kind of talk about how if you apply these oils to you, it helps to balance and support your body's frequencies. So um, take peppermint, for example. Um, Jonathan, we had a tornado come through Texas. I know if you live in Texas, you know what I'm talking about. It can be sunny that afternoon and a tornado comes through that night. And that's what was going on. And we were actually doing a hyperbaric chamber dive at the time. And the person who was monitoring it was knocking up on the little window saying, I'll let you know if it's okay to come out. And, and I'm like, well, we need to, you know, pressure up and we need to get out of this little chamber because there's a tornado. I can hear it on the radio. You know, it's like, ah. so I just threw a bunch of peppermint on Jonathan's feet, just on the bottom of his feet, on myself, everything, because that helps the pressure in our ears pop and everything. And so we got out and I was expecting Jonathan to be very anxious. He gets very anxious with uh, barometric pressure changes, hail, rain. It's just not a favorite time for him. And so um, he was over on the couch working on his iPad and he was a chill pill. <laughs> and I was like, I know we're hearing hail at the windows and they've got sirens going on. And I was like, well, what is going on? So I had always thought peppermint, they kind of advertise it as something to pick you up and, and, and perk you up and everything. 
And um, it actually, when I went to this frequency chart, peppermint is right here at 78 megahertz. Well, a healthy body state is between 65 and 80 megahertz. So I was blown away because I sat there and I realized the peppermint was actually bringing him from a agitated state to more of a balanced, supportive state. And I thought that was so cool. So that was my best example of how the frequencies of the oils adapt in the body and help the body to support the outcome you need. So, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Can and that's, you, I mean, you can get super, super geeky, but that's as geeky as I go right now. That's, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, I have another question. Is there another one that um, you might share with us like that would be really useful for a lot of parents? Yes. Um, one of my favorites. Oh, hang on. Before you go into that, do you want to not stop sharing your screen so we can see you again? Oh, no. I'd rather you see the screen than me. Ah, I know that. <laughs> But do we need to, is there something else you want to show yeah, us? Let me, let, okay. these, are the, these are some of the chapters in my book. I don't know why the pink thing is there. If oh, you I, see think, it, I, I don't I know why it's there. can draw and maybe I'll just see if I can remove it. <laughs> oh, no, that's great. I think it's very decorative. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my favorite things um, that we talk about a lot with a lot of my parents is um, focusing. And, you know, with a lot of our kids, having focus can be a challenge. And so the oils are definitely my go-to for that. Because number one, like I said before, the absorption is super fast. It's easy application. And they, they enjoy it. The children actually start craving a certain oil. And we'll tell you which ones they like. So this is one of my favorite recipes that um, I, I love sharing with everybody's focus power is um, you get a roller bottle that is right here, right by the pink thing. <laughs> and you can fill five drops of lavender, five drops of cedar wood, and five drops of vitivir, and put it with an, um, a carrier oil, which can be a coconut oil base, or, or um, extra virgin olive oil, or an almond oil, anything that, as long as it's organic. And you put it in the roller ball, and then boom, you apply it, um, and here I'll go ahead and stop sharing so I can show you where we usually go. There's the stop sharing. Ah, there we go. Is that better? Yeah. Am I back? We're you're back. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we do is we apply it um, on the temples and we rub it on the temples. There's a section on the crate, you know, on your skull where you can put it right across from top all the way down and to hit the, the brain stem back here. And I love that application because it, I just feel like it gets so instantly to his cognitive region that he needs that can help him focus and support that. So do you just roll it down through the scalp? Yes, you can roll it. And if you don't have a roller ball um, container, just use the oil. You know, um, I always say one of the things, my biggest rule is go slow and low. People who have already bought my book know that because I have it kind of everywhere or have come to my classes. It's like you go slow and low, meaning you um, start out slow. You know, you, you use one drop instead of the five that a recipe might take. Now, my recipes really are adapted to um, Jonathan. Usually it's for a child 50 pounds or more. Um, so I really feel that they are you know, adapted for a sensitive system. The other recipes out there you'll see, you know, cause for 15 drops and then 15 drops of this. And, and I'm like going, wow, that's a lot of frequencies, <laughs> you know? So do you ever dilute, like, let's say that recipe you showed us for the focus, would you mm -hmm. ever dilute one drop in water or something? Or would you recommend that for maybe younger kids? For the younger kids, you can even do like half a drop. Like if you put a drop in your hand and then you, you go like, you put a drop here and then you go like that, then you take the drop on your pinky and you can apply it. But you do want to start off with a carrier oil for really any, any person, even an adult. Now, you don't use water because oil runs away from water. So if you happen to um, get an oil in your eye or anything, um, don't ever flush it with water. Go get coconut oil or something like that and get it because the fat from the carrier oil will actually pull the essential oil to it 
and thus pull it out of your eye or, or um, and then the application you can do on the skin and stuff, it rubs it all in. It doesn't dilute it. That's the other thing is people have a big, big misconception about that is the oil strength, like this bottle of oil is going to have the strength in every drop, whether you use a carrier oil or not. So the fatty oil, which is the carrier oil, spreads it. So it doesn't dilute it, so it does spread it. So that's why I say go um, low, as in low dosage, because you don't want to really throw five drops thinking you need more. You know, start with the one, one to three drops or whatever. And then if you're seeing progress and you want more, like it wears off, so to speak, you know, people are like, oh, my oil wore, wore off. Well, what it did is it actually absorbed into your system and did its job. So um, I wouldn't increase the drops. What I would do is increase the frequency. So I would go ahead and reapply in 60 minutes or so, you know. But yeah, that's, that's one of the things I, I, and then when you're doing focus and stuff, frankincense is an amazing oil. I love, love, love it. It has uh, monocorpetines and sesquiterpetines. Uh, okay, I'm butchering that. Ses 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 oh, man. You know, I can do this. It, it's like, it's not, it's like, it's not, so uh, sesquiterpenes. Thank you. There we go. Sesquiterpenes, um, which they are known to cross the blood brain barrier. And that's why it's so great. But frankincense is more of a gentle one um, to where it has a great balance for pretty much all its recipients. Okay. I love so frankincense. What the. Um, uh, like number one circumstance you would use uh, frankincense for? Um, I call it my Zen oil. So whenever you're sitting there and you're going to um, have a challenging situation, I actually like frankincense to be part of my regime to apply to myself and to Jonathan. You know, that's the other thing. <laughs> Don't just use these oils on your kids. You gotta <laughs> use these oils on you, because uh, you need it too. You know, you need to go ahead and take care of yourself too, so you can take care of the rest of the crew. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I would use that for kind of like a a zen, not necessarily mellow, but zen, like uh, to concentrate and as if I was, you know, for prayer, or meditation, or whatever your spiritual connection. Uh, is that's where I use frankincense for that also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can we, uh, let's open it to questions. Uh, someone just typed in the chat box a question and then if other people have questions, you can either type them in or when I say next question, you can unmute and ask. So the question is what oil is good for speech? For speech. Well, there's a lot of them and that's, what's great is, um, the brand I use has a lot of great labels that kind of say what it is like peace and calming is for peace and calming you know but um that actually could be one used for speech because what you're doing is you're supporting the body's um, nervous system at the time to help it balance itself to where speech might have an easier way of coming out um that was a trick with this whole uh a journey I've had with Jonathan is he has words. They're just kind of trapped, you know, in his head. So to be able to balance his and support his body, uh, his immune system and lymphatic system and stuff to be able to say these words and everything. Um, that's the key. That's how you kind of have to think about it to, and that's where I've had success. So, um, vitivir is a wonderful oil. It's very sappy, but it is a very, um, beautiful oil to use that can help with, uh, I, I don't even know if I can say it helps with speech, but what it, again, what it will help with is for him to be able, him or her, sorry, to be able to focus in order to get that speech out. Okay. Yeah. Vitivir, um, lavender is always a go-to for us because it helps with his immune system. And when the seasons change, you know, that heightens a lot of things that can uh, come at them at once. And so if we, if we decrease that and balance that back out with lavender, that's a good one. And I see a lot of productivity out of that. So it sounds like what you're doing, which is a little bit like what I see with most biomed, you're, you're working with the internal systems 
to create a, a more homeostasis, more calm, so that then things can work better. So there's it just sounds like there's not just one oil that you magically can give them and they'll speak. <laughs> no, no, but that I think, but there is a set of them. You yeah. know, you get used to like what I have is I have my I never run out of these oils. You know, my health before hazard stash. Yeah. So um, lavender, frankincense, peppermint, lemon for sure. Um, I use an oil called Digize, and that helps a lot with the digestive system. And it has cinnamon bark in it, and um, so you can use an oil for that. And then um, it has, I believe, rosemary. I have to be very careful, too, because Jonathan started having uh, grand mal seizures a year and a half ago. And so I had to start investigating oils that might trigger things like that. So, again, you have to be extremely careful when you're using oils. Um, or just knowledgeable. I mean, it's, it, you have to be educated. That's why my, one of my biggest purposes is like, please educate yourself before you just start throwing them on. Um, whether it's with like this seminar to learn at least some to, to throw on and, and start with that are gentle, being lavender and then, um, peppermint's very strong, but, um, yeah, I always have my go-to, my, my stash. <laughs> so. good. good. And, um, I had a question at the tip of my tongue. Um, it sounds like, is, it, is, it, is that what it is? Well, let's let's go to the next question and forget my question because I've forgotten it. Um, oils for oral sensitivities. Okay, there's um, oral sensitivities. Um, yeah, it says for oral sensitivities. And whoever, Sadia, I don't know if you can unmute yourself. You in the little corner down below to the left, you can unmute and, and like give more of a question, uh, more, more context around that question. But it, it, all it says is, you know, oils for oral sensitivity. Yes. Um, hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Um, my question is, uh, my son is six years old. And we are having issues with um, oral sensitivities. That is, he won't let anybody touch his mouth. He won't let brush. He likes to chew uncontrollably. Yes. It's a hazard for him to choke. I'm always monitoring him. Yeah. And I've been reading into oils, and I was, I was asking, is there anything? Because dental visits, I know good for him. We are now losing teeth. He's biting me and chewing on my hands to pull out the teeth. It's just terrible. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Oh, my heart is just aching for you. In him, he's in pain. It sounds like he's in some, some pain. Um, any oil that I would apply to him, honestly, would be anywhere but around the mouth. So what I mean by that is if you're going to apply an oil, be it lavender or um, you might want to research some oils that help with any sort of bacterial issues, but I would apply it along the jawline and then on the bottom of his feet. So, you know, if he's that active grabbing and, and all that stuff, you might want to just keep it on the bottom of the feet or on the back of his spine to where it goes into his central nervous system. However, he won't be able to, to touch it and then maybe touch his eye or put it in his mouth because there are some oils that are hot. You know, and that could be uh, more aggravating to him than than your your <laughs> than what you're trying to do, and that's to help him. So um, I don't. I'm trying to think. I would hit some essential oils that have a bacterial targeting on it. You know, there's like clove is a great oil that helps with, but it's extremely hot. So you do need a carrier oil to use with that, and um, apply it anywhere where he wouldn't be able to touch it. So he doesn't again touch it and then put touch his eye or anything. Does that help? And plus, I would also I would look at doing um, you know I would look at doing some tests you know for some some uh, viruses he might be having that could be pushing this. And if he's if his teeth are falling out, then it could be it could be a really uh, bad infection that way and stuff. Um, is at the age that is losing teeth doesn't we have to is six years old. 
he's starting to lose his teeth as in pull out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, just even off the topic of essential oils, I actually have you, I would go get his uh, minerals tested and I've just ordered uh, those. I'm sorry. I've just ordered those. You just ordered them. Great. Okay. So yeah. when that comes in, go with your uh, practitioner and get guidance on how to, and to get the minerals into him. And then again, I kind of discussed it earlier, to balance the whole biochemistry, it's not just oils. You're gonna need a lot of stuff. But if yeah. you get that balance with minerals, electrolytes, and things like that, um, the essential oils will help too. And I would focus on things that are gonna make him feel good. Lavender is a great one to throw on the bottom of his feet, just that might help with some of the agitation he's feeling. Okay, thank you so that much. Help? Yes, a lot. Yay! Oh, good! Thank good, you. good, good, good! Great. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, there's a question about where do you put the oils for pertaining to speech, the ones you talked about. Where would you put those on the body? I would, I would focus on the, the cognitive aspect up here. So um, in my book, I've got this um, map I created, and it goes with the the limbic part of the brain, the, um, the, there's speech and there's memory. And those two are so important to be connected to. Um, so you can do what I mentioned before on Jonathan, every night before bed, I do a drop of frankincense and I come all the way on the, on the top of the head into the brainstem. But um, a girlfriend of mine had told me one time for speech, she actually put and you gotta be very careful, a drop of uh, an oil called brain power underneath the cheekbone and then down on the jaw. And she said she saw some more speech come from her son. My thinking on that would be it's helping with the sinus cavities and supporting that whole entire lymphatic system, which goes back to the, the overall, you know, get the body balanced. But on speech, I do concentrate up in this area. The bottom of your feet, if you go to, um, you can get like acupressure charts and stuff, meridian cycle acupressure charts. Anyway, the bottom of the big toe is connected to your brain. So if you don't want to put any oils up on this part on your child or on the brain, on the spinal cord and the brain stem, go to the bottom of the feet and you can put a drop under the big toe and, and it'll apply to the brain. Excellent. Thank yeah, you. Wow, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Wow, yeah, that is cool. Um, when you have a foot that's this big, you just throw it all over. Yeah, <laughs> it's good for everything. Yes. Um, someone's asking about kids with salicate sensitivity. Can they use peppermint oil? Do you know anything about that? Kids with what sensitivity? Salicate, so like salicylic acid. Oh, salicate. you know what? I don't know. I'll have to research it. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd love just to throw an answer out there, but when I really don't know, I'm not going to say <laughs> that I do. Okay. Okay. So I'll research that and then. Uh, okay. Um, there's another question. Alyssa is asking, what oil would you recommend to help calm when having really off days and oils for kiddos with sensory processing disorder? Where would you recommend applying them for speech and SPD? Okay, so you just talked about that, but, uh, you know, for to help with those really off days. Okay, well, what a uh, thing I need everybody to really remember too is the diffuser. Um, applying oils is fantastic and it definitely targets certain parts of the body that you want to support. But when you have oils in the diffuser, you know, it works on everything. It works on the body, it works on the, um, the limbic part of the brain, which is your memory, you know, so which helps trigger uh, behaviors to adapt to where you want them to be. So peace and calming, I've mentioned that oil before. Um, Idaho Blue Spruce is a great oil. Uh, I love, um, I love this great combination. People don't really know about it. And I gotta tell you, I didn't know about it until Jonathan taught me. And it's lemon, peppermint, and orange. And orange is an oil that they're doing tests on that's helping help trigger glutathione naturally in the body, which is a detoxifying enzyme, right? So uh, we're again working and supporting the lymphatic system. So you're wanting things to keep moving. And while things keep moving, that helps things calm down in the body. So that would help with any sort of like 
sensory touch, you know, and that also helps with the, um, what I call the, the, you know, the wiggles, <laughs> the giggly wiggles, you know, you just, you want to go ahead and comment down and, um, Lavender is one that I always go to. I put on the top of the feet, actually, because it helps with the respiratory, supporting respiratory um, system. And then um, the bottom of the feet. But the spinal, up and down, I'm gonna turn around real quick. If you go up and down the spinal column and you start using the nerve endings along that, you really are gonna be getting any oil you apply to your child in really fast. So that's another good application. But the diffuser is when, when I know it's going to be, you know, a challenging day, I throw something in the diffuser because it just gets everything. It, it really does. It's, it's amazing. And it probably helps with the whole diffuser, family. I'm sorry? Probably helps with the whole family because if one person's <laughs> off, the rest can be off, right? <laughs> we do. And we, yeah, you know, energies are, are, are contagious. So... You definitely want to have the benefit of everybody being on the same, you know, chill plane would be awesome. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what? Okay. Sadia just typed in what oils to get child unstuck. Sadia, do you want to uh, unmute That's and ask? I'll unmute you, actually. And you can ask. Unstuck. Okay. <laughs> I am you now. It's me again. Um, we have a situation. We are based in London, UK. Uh huh. And unfortunately, we have a system that's not working. My child is stuck on the introduced things that he does at school, and he seems to be stuck on like one thing. We can't move to the next stage. So he doesn't want to transition to something else. He's yeah, just he's, yes, it's just like a month, two months. We're just in limbo. And time is of the essence. Uh, the staff are struggling. I'm struggling. I've been diffusing um, vetiva, sandalwood, and frankincense. And I'm in the process of getting the school to accept. Okay, you know, real quick, let me just say the sandalwood and frankincense are both very strong oils that okay. um, help with uh, supporting the cognitive part of the body. So I would just actually reduce and use one or the other. And then I would go into an oil that might help him with his um, lymphatic system, which would be lavender and okay. um, orange. Orange is really a great oil to help, especially the boys, to help uh, just kind of diffuse the body's heightened senses. So um, it's also, it's photo uh, sensitive, so be careful you want to put it on places where the sun doesn't shine. So, um, you know, that's, that's one. Valor is a great oil. Um, the oils I use, the company, it has this collection called the Reconnect Collection, and it helps bring children into the awareness of where they are. So that would be a great collection for you to look into to do. What's the name again? Reconnect collection and it's four different oils that have a bunch of oils in them so um you can get um you can see the breakdown of the oils and everything and then there's a protocol in the box that can help guide you okay. thank you so much yeah yeah i saw someone on the chat it's popping up and down every once in a while luminara and um they said you know do i use grounding and i like yes i use grounding it is like <laughs> I don't is that one of the four reconnect or is that a different one? No, grounding is, um, it is the best oil for Jonathan and myself to, um, when I'm in an overwhelming state, like getting ready for this, I was sitting there kind of thinking, oh my gosh, you know, it could be a two week, you know, presentation with all the things you could talk about about oils. So I used grounding to help me really sit and just kind of, um, bring forth the oils that I don't think will overwhelm everybody, but will definitely inform everybody. And um, grounding just has, it's a blended oil. So what blends are, are where you have single oils mixed in a concoction already ready to go. So grounding is one of them that is just amazing. So I can't remember, it was like, I just saw the word grounding and somebody said, do you use it? I'm like, oh, yes, we do. 
So Jonathan, the cutest video I have of him is I said, what are you smelling? He's smelling his grounding oil. And I go, what's it help with? And he goes, all the energies. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, it does. You're right. I couldn't have said it better. So Fantastic. grounding oil is a definite favorite in our house. Excellent. Well, I see, um, I see that's most of the questions. One other is the Idaho blue spruce that you mentioned. Um, what benefits do you see specifically with the autism spectrum in mind? It gives an, the body an overall sense of um, like calming. Um, and it also helps with a, a pain tolerance that I find Jonathan has. He has a real high pain tolerance. And so lots of times if he would get, uh, I found out, you know, in 2010, he was getting migraines and I had no idea because he was not able to tell me. And um, anyway, I found out because he would shut all the blinds down. He'd sit in a chair upside down. I mean, it was just little things like that. And then he'd get really sick. Um, so Idaho Blue Spruce ended up being an oil I used on uh, the bottom of his feet. And then I would rub it along the inside of the foot, which is um, on the uh, acupressure chart, it is the spine, is, you know. So to me, if you rub it up and down, you know, your spine or you do it here on your foot, it really helped kind of desensitize, desensitize his body but brought the pain um, more into a manageable level for him. And uh, so that is, that's one of my, um, my, and pain is of course interpreted all sorts of ways but discomfort and everything, it really helps him stay um, homeostasis, as you said earlier. That's a good word. <laughs> <I like> that. <laughs> Excellent. So we're going to wrap up in a moment, but um, Claudia asked, where can you get the reconnect in the UK? I don't know. Um, I do know that. Or where can uh, we get any of the oils that you're mentioning? Which Okay. The, well, and like the oil, the only oils I use are Young Living essential oils. So um, you do have to get a membership, but that's what's great when you get a, um, like what they call a starter kit, a premium starter kit, you get a diffuser in it. So do you remember how I was saying it's so important to have the diffusing going on as an application for your child? So it's a, that's a company that puts together a whole kit for you. You can go to my, my website and get the oils that way. Um, I pretty they're worldwide so they do have an office in London so you can get them that but you can't get it at a store and and the oils you get at a store just be super careful with because they're not 100% pure they have additives in them and um yeah it's okay it's, and I would also recommend um Sadia maybe uh you can connect with Maureen through her website and she might yeah. have a contact for you in the UK that isn't like at the top of your head, but you might be able to find that for her. Yeah. So. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just contact me and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out someone over there to who can support her and, and, or we'll just do it online here. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So there's a couple more questions, but I want to wrap up. So can, if you can do a one word answer, uh, oils for anger and temper issues. They're out there. They're there for sure. Um, Sarah is a great oil I use for that. S A R A, Young Living again. Um, grounding is great for that. Um, any citrus oil can will probably be able to lift up, lift up the uh, the frequencies of the body to uplift it to a better state. Let's okay. Thank you. And then someone's asking about um, DoTerra oils, or if you've tried any others. I do know about doTERRA oils. I've never tried them. doTERRA uh, came about. It started the company um, from people who left Young Living and they started their own company. So um, I've just stayed with Young Living just because they were the originals. So I like, to, I like to know the people. And plus Young Living has farms and stuff. I'm not sure about other oil companies and if they own their farms or broker the oils. I'm not quite sure. But you know, use the oil that resonates with you you know research them um if if that oil is something that you feel comfortable using you know use it um i just use young living 
All right. Thank you. I want to thank Maureen and thank our listeners for joining in and out. Yes, thank you, guys. And, uh, and you can get more information uh, from Maureen's website that I put um, in the chat box, hopedreambelieve.com and essential oils for sensitive systems.com. And um, also on your website, there is, I just wanted to say there's um, top 10 starting steps for parents introduced to autism. So you can get that free on Maureen's website. And then you can also check for, um, on my website, autismtransform.com. Um, shortly, I'll have my resources page. I've been working with a lot of goodies there, but that's where you can find the recording of this video on, on, in my resources. So thank Great. you. Oh, and Luminara, I just want to add the hopedreambelieve.com has the starting steps, the top starting steps. And if you go to essentialoilsforsensitivesystems.com, um, and you sign up on the mailing list, I will email you um, three recipes. Oh, so, great. Yeah, I just, but I just, I needed that. There was no place for me to really put free recipes for everybody, you know, just so um, I thought if you go ahead and fill out the mailing list on the essential oils for sensitive systems.com website, then I'll email you back three recipes that'll help you with. Um, I'm going to do the yeast beast recipe to help balance the gut and the digestive system, focus and concentration, and um, sweet dreams, oils to help your kids sleep. Oh, excellent. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for doing this and bringing this whole platform to everybody. And thank everybody for, for being here. This was so cool. I love the Zoom thing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye to everyone. <laughs>